Neuromodulation is a procedure that allows us to use electrodes within the spinal canal to help patients with chronic neuropathic pain. Neuropathic pain um, uh, defined more or less is where patients have pain that never goes away. It's there 24 hours a day, um, seven days a week, 365 days a year. The pain may uh, intensify depending on what they're doing, but it's there at rest and it's there with movement. Um, typical conditions where we, we see patients who have neuropathic pain, they're usually patients who have had cervical or lumbar radiculopathy, chronic regional pain syndrome, failed back surgical syndrome, post herpetic neuralgia, and uh, neuropathy. There are a bunch of different neuropathic pain conditions um, uh, that would be too numerous to list, but those are probably the top ones we see in treat. Patients in their initial appointment that we uh, see and evaluate and determine that they have chronic neuropathic pain, we start thinking of, 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 of discussing neuromodulation early in their treatment continuum. That doesn't mean that we're gonna, that's gonna be the first treatment that we do for them. Um, obviously, we're gonna try to exhaust conservative care first, as, as you'll hear me discuss over and over. I'm gonna try different medications, get them involved in physical therapy, and try simple injections to resolve their pain. But if it doesn't help their pain, then I'm probably gonna be quick to offer them neuromodulation to give them a better long-term solution for their pain problem. Why I love neuromodulation is that it, it's a two-step process. It's a try it before you buy it. So patients can come to our clinic and they can have the electrodes put uh, or placed in their spine. And then they can leave and go live their life for five to seven days and see if it helps them out. When they return, yeah, to have the, the leads removed, um, I always ask them um, three big questions. One, did it help their pain? Two, did it improve their function that week? And three, did it decrease their need for medications? If the answer is yes to all three of those, it's a simple decision. At that point, we talk about having that device permanently implanted to help them with their chronic pain. A patient who decides to move forward with the procedure is done on an outpatient basis. Uh, typically, we do the procedure in the office. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Once everything is set up, then we determine where we're gonna start the procedure. At that point, I will numb the patient up. The worst part about the procedure is the first three to five minutes of me numbing them up. Through the numb track of tissue, I'll put an epidural needle into the epidural space. So essentially, this procedure is no different than getting a simple epidural in our office. But in the end, through the needle, instead of injecting steroids, I'll advance a lead with electrodes on it. I will place those leads where they need to be done to cover the patient's pain. Once I get the leads in place, we will turn the electrodes on and the patient will feel a vibration or paresthesia feeling over their area of pain. Once we've covered their painful area, I will turn it off. I will remove the needle while leaving the lead in place and then put a small suture to suture the lead to the skin. From there, the lead will be attached to an external battery source. We will tape that all down and then turn the patient loose and let them go home. They will use the device over the next five to seven days with occasional probably reprogramming, making sure that we optimize the therapy to make sure they're getting the best possible results. Then they will return to the clinic five to seven days later to have the device taken out. That is an easy appointment. Patient will come in, we'll remove the tape that is holding down the battery and the lead. Once the tape is removed, we'll cut the suture that's holding the lead into place. And then from there, we'll gently pull the lead out. The whole process takes less than 30 seconds. I will then ask the patient a couple of questions to make sure they are a candidate to move forward with a permanent implant. So one, I'll ask the patient, did the device help their pain while they went through the trial process? Insurance is looking to see that the patient got at least 50% relief in order to move forward with a permanent implant. The second question, I'll ask them if it improved their function. Were they able to do more while they had the trial device in place? And then lastly, I wanna make sure that the device decreased their need for chronic medications. So any medications they're taking, I'll ask them if it reduced their need to, to be on them. If the answer is yes to all three of those questions, then it's a simple decision to move forward with a permanent implant. 
We typically want to get that implant done within two to four weeks of the trial period. After the trial stimulator is done, the patient will be set up for the permanent implant within two to four weeks of the trial period. The implantation of a permanent spinal cord stimulator is no different than the trial, except it cannot be done in the office. And that is because it is a minimally invasive surgical procedure requiring small incisions that must be done at a surgery center or a hospital. The patient will show up the day of the procedure, be checked in, and about an hour later, their surgical procedure will take place. On average, I can do the procedure in 30 to 40 minutes. And then the patient will still be in the recovery area for about an hour afterwards. So the whole experience is about three hours long for the patient. Two small incisions are typically made. One to enter the leads into the epidural space, and a second one to hide the energy source or battery pack, typically in the buttock area. No body parts are removed with a procedure, so the patient has very little pain following it. They only have incisional pain, and ice with a small amount of pain medications helps them get through the post-operative period. Typically, I do the procedure on a Friday afternoon and patients are back to work on a Monday morning. After the implant is done, the patient will need to follow up 10 to 14 days later to have skin staples removed where the incisions were made. Then the device may have to be fine-tuned over the next several months to maximize pain relief and function and overall their outcome. After the device is permanently implanted, um, it may migrate a little bit or scar tissue may form around the leads. And so they'll have to meet with their stimulator representative to adjust the stimulator to overcome um, uh, those things. At our clinic, we're able to offer patients two types of neuromodulation devices. One would be a spinal cord stimulator, and the second one would be a dorsal root ganglion stimulator. Spinal cord stimulation is just like it sounds. We are putting leads in the epidural space over the dorsal part of the spinal cord, and we're stimulating the spinal cord to cut off the pain signal to the brain. Typically, we're gonna pick that device if patients have uh, focal, but more widespread pain. So if patients have back and bilateral leg pain, a spinal cord stimulator would be a better option to treat that patient's pain. The second option that we have is a dorsal root ganglion stimulator. The dorsal root ganglion is what attaches the peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system, or the spinal cord. The dorsal root ganglion sits on the edge of the spinal column. We are able to put leads out through the neural foramen at specific levels to cover patients who have more focal pain. So we're going to use a, a, a dorsal column stimulator to get a patient who has focal pain anywhere from the iliac crest down through the foot. So we can get lower abdominal pain, hip pain, knee pain, foot pain, um, more focally. How we determine if you're a candidate for one or the other depends on your distribution of pain. As discussed before, a spinal cord stimulator would be used for a little bit more widespread pain back through your leg. The dorsal root ganglion stimulator is going to be picked for a patient who has more focal pain in one extremity. After the device is placed, if it's helping the patient, they usually have to follow up for the first couple of months for fine tuning. Once the device is fine tuned, at that point we're typically looking to eliminate any medications the patient's on. We have a lot of success stories where we're able to get patients 100% off their medications. In other cases, we're able to uh, reduce patients' medications by greater than 50%. If a patient is able to completely get off their medications, at that point, they no longer have to come back to our clinic. They're able to use the device and move on with life and only come back and see us if they have questions or problems. For both devices, on average, the battery will last up to 10 years. The company that I typically use is, has a non-rechargeable device meaning that a patient doesn't have to charge their device every few days or a few weeks. One of the other advantages of the company I use is that the battery is upgradable, meaning that as new technology comes available, the patient doesn't have to have any further surgeries. They can just meet with a rep and through Bluetooth technology, they can have that new technology programmed into their battery and allow them to utilize it immediately. Complications are just like any other procedure. The, the biggest risk is infection. Anytime you cut the skin, the risk of infection is less than one or two percent. Um, uh, we categorize infections into two categories. One, superficial, and two, deep. If the infection is superficial, usually it resolves with 
observation and antibiotics only. If the infection progresses and becomes a deep infection, our fear is that the stimulator becomes infected. If that happens, the device has to be removed and then the patient has to be treated with either oral or anti IV antibiotics until the infection is resolved. Once the infection is resolved, then the device can be put back in. I've been putting these devices in for over 10 years and I've only had a couple um, cases where uh, the device had to be removed due to a deep infection. But in those cases, the patients have gotten the device put back in and it's helped them out and they are, are still happy and would go through the procedure again. In my career, I've probably done anywhere from 800 to over a thousand of these procedures. It's straightforward, easy to do, and uh, the, the relief that patients get is amazing. I can't tell you how many success stories I have where patients have come back, they're off medications, and their chronic pain issues is gone by the wayside and they're able to move on with life. Those are the cases that drive me to do what I do on a day in and day out basis. The proof is in the pudding. A, a patient has nothing to lose with having a trial. It's a five, 10 minute procedure with minimal risk and it can change their life. So I'd encourage any patient who is thinking about spinal cord stimulation to at least have the trial done and let them see for themselves if that is a lifelong changing procedure uh, that, that can help their chronic pain. Check out these videos where we have patient testimonials about how great they've done with both spinal cord stimulation and dorsal root ganglion stimulation and how it's transformed their lives.